Hi, this is Damien Muir, the Metering Technical Specialist at Burmad Water Technologies. And today on this short information video, I'm going to show how you can extract the data logs from any Euromag flow meter with a MC608 converter. So firstly, uh, what we'll do is we'll show how you can uh, download the software. So if we go to burmadmeters.com.au, and from here, you can navigate through our product range. Or if you're wanting to download the software, probably the easiest way is just click the search button here, type in software, search for the software, and it'll come up with our software on our Euromag MC608 converters, as well as our smart meters. So we just click on there, view this product. We scroll down the bottom, we have a range of different documents that we can download including the software configuration software so you simply click on that download your software ready for use so once we have that software downloaded we can open it up and this is what it looks like so before we connect though we've got to make sure our meter is ready to be able to be communicated with now for a powered meter, whether it be 24 volts, 240 volts, or solar powered, uh, the communications is always open. However, on a battery unit, it does go into battery mode and deactivate the communication to save power. So we need to activate it to enable those communications. So here we have a battery mag flow. And what we do is we can see on the bottom here, some LEDs that are blank here. So what we do is when it's woken up, you'll see a red LED meaning that the communications is, is open. So what we take, we magnetic swipe on the side of the unit to activate it. We see here that says activate with a picture of a magnet. We simply tap or swipe it around that region there and you can see the red LED comes on. And that will be active for three minutes enabling us enough time to establish communication and download the data logs. So now that we've got the meter active and awake, we connect our infrared communication cable. So we plug the USB port into our computer and you can see the blue light coming on on our infrared cable. So we're ready to go. We plug it. Here's the infrared port on the converter here. So we just position this at 12 o'clock. Just clip that over the front casing, aluminum casing, and it'll have infrared communication through the glass. You don't need to remove the cover. So now we have that positioned, we can open up our software again. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we've selected IRCOM. So infrared communication is our method. Here we just use, uh, keep these as the standard communication settings. And we just collect the appropriate COM port here. So you have, uh, mul might have multiple COM ports here that are populated. If you have quite a number and it's difficult to know which one to choose, probably the simplest way to find out is just disconnect your USB cable from your computer. Re-open that and you'll see one has disappeared here. So I know that it's COM10 as I've reconnected again and it'll reappear. So there we go. We know it's COM10. Now what we need to do is press connect. And you'll see connected on the bottom left here, knowing that we established communications. And on the front page here we have our parameters. So we have all the main parameters on the meter, engineering units, all the, all the pulse and alarm outputs, alarms, etc., and some information about the meter itself. But what I want to show today is how to extract a data log. So we'll simply just click on the data log tab here to bring up the data log of a parameter window. And here we can see if we click read, it shows what intervals that logs are being read. So it's taking a log every 15 minutes. So on the first log, it will be counted as one, then two, and sequentially goes up. So here it's showing a start, the first 10 logs from zero to 10. So see how many actual logs are inside the meter itself. We click on get last log. So here we see this is recorded 547 logs. So as it's recording on the default every 15 minutes, so that's four logs an hour, so it's roughly 100 logs a day. So I know that it's roughly five days of recording there. 
So if you ever want to go back and and uh, take the last week, say, of recordings, you know you just need the last 700 logs will give you that, that interval. But you might want to just download the whole lot and after you download it, you can also reset the data log to erase all the logs that you've already extracted. Otherwise, it's a rolling data log. It will just keep recording over the oldest log when it gets full. Now, this data logger can record 200,000 lines of data. So on the 15 minute intervals, that's roughly six and a bit years. So plenty of capacity there. So here we click read log and that will read what we've selected here, which is the whole data log recording. So on the progress bar on the bottom here, we can see that downloading shouldn't take very long at all. And once it's finished, it populates the field here to show us what we've downloaded. Okay, so this is considered, as I mentioned, a line of data to which it has the capacity of recording over 200,000 lines. So here we, um, we can look at the chart. It's a very simple line graph. We're obviously sitting on the bench, but if you want to see some flows and if there's a particular anomaly or section that you might want to zoom in on, so you might say, look, I want to look between 200 and 300, you can always go back here and change this field to just select that part you're interested in. Otherwise, if you wanted to download the whole lot, say, we just click Save CSV. I mean, obviously, you just select where you want to save this file. So once you've downloaded the data logs, then we can just open it up. So we'll just click on the, the field, open up the, the field where it was. And here we go. Now when we've opened this up, you can see here that it's in semicolon separated format, which is the European standard. So to revert that to a, a column separa comma separated to be able to populate these fields, we just select comma column A, we just click on data, and then text to columns. So we're taking all of those. We're telling it what the delimiter is. It's saying that it's a European semicolon. And this is the standard for, for Europe. So now we've now we put it in the format where we can actually read it. Now when we save it and open it up, it'll always be in this format. So here you can see any errors that occur, the percentage of battery life, what the internal temperature of the board is, very important for battery units. It will give a high temperature alarm once it reaches above 60 degrees. And obviously the captured flow rate, total flow forward reverse, and time and date stamped. So it gives you all that critical flow information in the meter itself. If you have any other questions, please contact us at Burma Technologies and thank you for your time.